So what's the best way to learn ICS, OT, cybersecurity? I know for me personally, I read a lot. And so I always look to books for for help. And the nice thing about books is I can take them in on my own pace, right? I'm not sitting in the class, even though I get, of course, a lot of benefit from, from courses, especially those that, that are online and they're recorded so I can pause them when, when I want. But, but books allow me to pull in information, digest it at my own pace, and then just kind of lets it settle in and helps me learn. Now, when I first got into ICSOT cybersecurity, there weren't really any books <laughs> out there. There were some white papers. You might find some posts online. Uh, that's changed, right, in the last 10, maybe 15 years. So I wanted to go over my top five favorite ICS books. And these are all books that I actually have within reaching distance of my desk. That's how I went ahead and distinguished between the top five and let's say the, the bottom five if I was to do a, a list of list of 10. So number five, this is actually, I call this Eric's book. <laughs> so this is, this is Industrial Network Security, Securing Critical Infrastructure Networks for Smart Grid, SCADA, and Other Industrial Control Systems, third edition. So it's actually the, as you'd imagine, the third version in, in the, the line, I think the original one came back out in like 2011. So it was a year after news of Stuxnet hit. So again, there really wasn't anything out back then. So I really appreciated the, the series that have, have existed uh, over time and all the, the thought and effort that he had put into the this series. I think he had a co-author for, for the second one, but he's back with the third one. I think it's about probably a year old at this point. And um, it's really exciting to see. I think it's a great book that's written for whether you're coming from IT or OT. So if you're coming from IT cybersecurity, like that's my background, or if you're coming from you know, an engineering automation control systems background, it really takes that approach where it's written for everyone right there's something for everyone i also appreciate the writing style i think it's probably i guess i imagine something close similar to my own it's very straightforward uh very simple in in and meaningful um as well as all the samples that are added into the book are, are meaningful them themselves I, I won't show it i don't want to get in trouble with the publisher <laughs> but but i think the the way they've packaged the book together as well they did they did a really really good job because i've seen some really bad uh, control system and just cybersecurity books out there which i'm sure many of uh, many of my friends have have as well so and you might have as uh, as well so but it's a very good, solid, I think, straightforward, laid out approach. And I would probably change maybe a few little things, but it's not my book. <laughs> so like I said, it's Eric's book. Uh, and I really appreciate, you know, how he looks at things, you know, coming from his time, whether it's at Honeywell or, you know, his roles before that, he's now the, 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 um, CTO over at OpSWAT. So, you know, you have somebody that has this tremendous control systems or ICS OT background and really was one of the first people to bring that information and make it available to the masses, which is what I really appreciate. So, so number five is, is Eric's, Eric's new book, uh, for industrial network security. So that's a big one for me. Number four is where we're talking about I S A I E C six two four four three. So if you're not familiar, I S A I E C six two four four three is the gold standard in securing control system environments. But if you go to get the standards, it's like sixteen hundred bucks, maybe a little bit more these days, right? That's not something that a lot of people can afford. So 62443 as a standard, or it's really a, a group of standards, it's not approachable for, for everyone. 
But there's a book, and and the book itself isn't, you know, I think it's a hundred and twenty, hundred and thirty dollars something in that area. So it's it's not super inexpensive, but it's definitely much more approachable than going and buying the the six two four four three standard. So this was actually written by and published by Exta, which is a engineering firm, and they do a lot of training. But it was actually written by two gentlemen, Michael Medoff and Patrick O'Brien. And it's uh, implementing IEC 62443, a pragmatic approach to cybersecurity. Uh, It's interesting. Every time I go to order a copy of the book, I've ordered a few over time. And if I do a search for like IEC 62443 on Amazon, it pulls up batteries, car like car batteries. (laughs) But, But once you find the book... You know, there's a couple things I really love about the book itself. It, it's, it tries to make 62443, I think, understandable for, for folks. It's a great introduction, but also then gets into the key areas or key focus areas for 62443. So when you talk about risk assessments, right, the risk assessment process is key to securing an ICSOT environment, whether you're following 62443 or not. And right? so they actually go into details about how to conduct a 62443 based risk assessment. And that's something that you don't see really in, in other books or in many other places outside of a course that somebody's written, especially a course from ISA and IEC. So definitely it's it's if you are conducting risk assessments and you want to follow the 62443 format, then this book is is gold. So it also gets into when you look at 62443, looks at the network from this perspective of zones, like how we break logically break up the OT network into these different zones and kind of equate those to like subnets and VLANs, kind of, right? That where we bring systems together that are related and that they're going to communicate with each other and share that information or share the information between themselves so they will reside in a zone. Let's say all the systems related to my to safety of the plant could be in a safety zone as as an example. And then we have what we call conduits, right? The pathways of communication between those zones because we want to restrict communication to only the traffic we need, right? Network Security 101. So I think they do a really good job of of talking about those different concepts from the 62443 perspective. And it also acts as a really good study guide or refresher if you're going to take the ISA 62443 certification exams. It's a, to me, it's a good study guide to read through before you go take those exams because it will help help with you uh, remembering the 6244 related content on on those exams by by far Um, they also get into other areas in the book that you normally don't see in a lot of others like talking about fad and sat so factory acceptance testing and site acceptance testing or or sometimes we talk about cfad and csat so the cyber versions right when can we test systems before they go into production Right, where we can really hit those. And then they wrap up the book. They actually get into uh, operations and maintenance or O&M work. And then also talking about then like how do operators in the environment respond to uh, different alarms that we have, right? We, what's the whole point of why we are monitoring our control systems to be able to react, to be able to adjust a process before something bad in the environment happens. So. So if 62443 is on your plate, and it should be in a control system environment, this is a great book to use as a a reference. So this is one that sits on the shelf right, literally right, right next to the the desktop. And I refer to it a lot. So special thanks to the the authors for, for that one. So this one, the next one, I call this the GICSP book, but it's actually Practical Industrial Cybersecurity and then ICS Industry 4.0 and IIoT. All these really long titles. <laughs> but this was written as, the way it was explained to me, was, was written as a study guide for people that were taking the GICSP course 
from or the exam from SANS, whether you had taken the GICSP course or you were just going to go and take the exam. It's a way for, for folks, especially with a background in ICS, OT, cybersecurity, to kind of touch up on those different areas of, of information that are tested on the exam. And I think it's a great book, even if you're not going to take the exam, that it's a great book, especially for folks coming from IT and IT cybersecurity to go through the, the book and help understand or start to learn about ICS and, and OT. I really like it because it, at first I was like, well, this looks like a Cybux study guide. And Cybux study guides I used for uh, you know, well over 10 years studying for IT cybersecurity exams. And so the publisher had bought Cybex. So this really was a Cybex study. I was really excited because it had, you know, the same images inside. It had the same look, the same feel, the review questions at the end of the chapter even had right the same fonts and the same, same layout. But it really, I think, hits home, right? Here's a high level overview of ICS OT and, and why it's important, how we do cybersecurity in critical infrastructure. So it's a really great, great book. So definitely check that out, especially if you're going to go study or take the GICSP course. So, but a lot of great real world examples and, and keeps it simple and straightforward for, for preparing for the, the exam. Now, number two, this is by far one of my favorites of of all time and this one is about seven years old this is the hack and expose book for industrial control systems and this one was actually you can see written by clint bodung and uh brian singer and then a few other folks that i haven't met so aaron spieb stephen hilt and, and kyle wilhoit but the the book and i used to be a big fan of the hack and expose series that had come out and really was right, teaching people how to break into to systems. I've always been fascinated with breaking into systems to make me a better defender. And that's why I always suggest everybody read this book, because by understanding how attackers break in and manipulate control systems and the processes that those control systems are responsible for, yeah, it makes you a better defender. We can understand what the attackers do and how to stop them from doing something bad in the environment. So it's another book. They keep it simple. Lots of real world examples. Yes, is the book seven years old at this point? Sure, but nothing's really changed in securing ICSOT environments from the perspective of the control systems. So like one of the great examples is if you're looking at how Modbus is a, works as a protocol, how you can manipulate a PLC over Modbus, which is an unauthenticated protocol, which means you're not asked for a username and password. Right? That's all covered here. That hasn't changed today. So everything in here is very applicable. So again, it's definitely highly recommended. One of my favorite books, one of my favorite books of, of all time, for sure. So I've had a lot of fun with, with that book over the years. And last but not least, I've actually talked about Sandworm more than a few times. I've talked about this book has literally changed my life uh, in, in many ways for, for the best. And it was, it was partly what had primed the pump, pump for me really to make a really big push into control system cybersecurity. But Andy Greenberg wrote this. It's actually Sandworm, a new era of cyber war and the hunt for the Kremlin's most dangerous hackers. Sandworm is one of the Russian government's most notorious state actor groups. Right? And they're the ones that are particularly known for going directly after the Ukraine. And whether it's through IT cybersecurity attacks or they have a huge focus on ICS OT cybersecurity. And so what I really appreciate about the book is it really tells the story of kind of, you know, through recent history. And then we can even see where we're at in 2024 today that I, where we've come along with control system cybersecurity, right? As we see the, the lines blur between IT cyber and, and OT cyber, I right? talk about 
Stuxnet in 2010, where we had the uh, American and Israeli government had developed the first known cyber weapon to target another state adversary, in this case, Iran. And at that incident, and this is very highlighted in the book, was it was really this opening of Pandora's box where you can't go back because once it was known that the Americans and Israelis had targeted another state adversary, but every other country around the world was watching and they saw this happening. So, and what were the repercussions against the Americans and Israelis? And there really weren't any, no, no direct repercussions. I think at that point, you know, a lot of the other countries have said, not only, hey, well, we can do this too, but also I think a lot of countries like China and Russia probably looked at the sophistication in Stuxnet, this technological marvel, still even by today's standards, and realized they were well behind the curve and they really needed to, to step up their games. So there's a lot that happened and, and it's highlighted in, in the book. It even talks about and introduces, we look at, you know, I said players in the ICSOT cybersecurity space like Rob Lee, which which was funny because you learn about Rob Lee and some of his past and how, you know, he was in the Air Force and he was doing different work in, in Africa and then how he, you know, transitioned through the, the Air Force into uh, the, you know, forming the group for the NSA in the United States to track state adversaries that were targeting control system environments. Even though, and funny, right, Rob Lee was never interviewed for, for the actual book, but it makes you feel like he really was. So, but Andy Greenberg is a, a great writer. Uh, it's it's one of those also that, unlike the other books, which are kind of textbookish, right, that this one, it it's a novel, right? It reads like a novel. So it's, it's much easier to read to help understand the big picture right what are the real implications of really control system cyber security so when we talk about ics ot and the mission right and and understanding is this mission for you and maybe it's not right but maybe it is if it is right you need to be in ics ot cyber security and if not that's okay go do whatever works for you Right? But it can help you understand, right, is, is ICSOT cybersecurity a place for you or not? And if that is a place for you, then it really gives you this high level overall big picture understanding of cybersecurity, especially in the critical infrastructure space. So that's my top five. And again, I think there's a lot of great authors. There's so much information in these books between Sandworm, Hacking Exposed, right? The GISESB study guide, which is what I call it. Again, <laughs> the 62443 books that we have from our friends over at Exida, and then Eric's Purple Book, that I call it these days. <laughs> so with industrial network security. Those five books. If you read just those five books, that puts you way ahead of the game uh, in understanding control system or ICS OT cybersecurity. So thanks for checking out the video and we'll see you in the next one.